Hey, what's up guys? Just a quick video for you here today from the cab of my truck. You see a video I posted last year, almost exactly a year ago, for whatever reason is suddenly getting a bunch of views. And there's quite a few comments about it questioning why I said I didn't like the saying, it's, it's not the volts that kill, it's the amps. Um, I find that when people say that it can be extremely misleading. Um, in a literal sense, yes, it is the amps that kill without amperage. Voltage is, for lack of better terms, harmless. That's what you can see birds sitting on a power line. However, I obviously didn't do a very good job of explaining myself when I mentioned that in the video. So I'm going to try and explain a little better exactly what I was referring to when I said I'm, I'm not a big fan of that saying. So I just did up a quick super simple drawing here where let's say we got the source this is the transformer the pole the generating station whatever whatever you want to consider it and let's say we've got two houses now each house is being fed by 120 volts triplex it's actually 12240 but just for for the purpose of explaining in this video we've got triplex that's got 120 volts feeding one home and 120 volts feeding the other home now the home on the right, the meter's still on and the house is drawing 100 amps. The home on the left, the meter's been pulled and if you were to take a voltage and amp check on those wires, you're going to find 120 volts and zero amp. So what I'm afraid of with that, that saying is people assuming that perhaps they'll get a worse shock off this line versus this line where this one's loaded up with 100 amp and this one's zero amp, which isn't the case at all. The human body, the resistance of the human body, for lack of better words, is a constant. It's it's pretty hard to determine what the resistance is. It's going to have a ton of factors, even things as simple as if you're sweating, uh, what clothes you're wearing, what part of your body actually makes contact. The, the skin on your fingers is more resistance than the skin on your palm or, or the skin on your wrist, for example. Whether the contact is going through a hand and out your foot or coming in one shoulder and out the other, it's, it's got much less of a path to travel. But just again for this example, we're going to say that the human body has 50,000 ohms. So where that's a constant, in, in both situations, the same individual wearing the exact same clothes, exact same points of contact, is going to have 50,000 ohms of resistance. If this individual is standing on the ground and he makes contact with this live line, which has zero amps to the customer, he's going to draw an amperage through himself into the ground. And where that resistance is a constant, the amperage going through the individual in this case versus this case is going to be the exact same amount. So the formula where you're going to use with Ohm's law, the amperage is equal to volts divided by resistance. So we have 120 volts, 50,000 ohms resistance. So there's going to be 0 0.0024 ohm passing through that body in the event of accidental contact with the triplex in either of those situations. So we all know that 0.1 of an amp can be a lethal amount of amperage. So this example isn't showing enough amperage to be lethal. However, it's, it's quite likely that that resistance is going to be much, much lower, especially if your, your, your skin is moist at all. Or, like I said, if you if the path is, let's say, between your right shoulder and your right arm, then that the current's going to travel just through that arm, and the resistance is going to be much, much lower. It'll be quite a bit more painful of a shock than, than the 50,000 ohms resistance. So another, like I said, the, the, the main reason I don't like the saying that it's not the volts that kill, it's the amps, is because it leads people, when somebody has a minor shock, to say, how much amperage is in that line. And whether there was 100 amp in that triplex or zero amp, it's not gonna change the outcome of the current if that individual is standing on the ground. Now, if they're in series with the wire, that's a different story. Now, the other reason I don't like the saying it's not the volts that kill, it's the amps, is if we take this exact same scenario and up the voltage, there we go. So we've got the same, exact same situation. Now I said meter, we're not gonna have a meter on 7200 volts, but just, for, for purposes of this video, if we have a 12,000 volt line and there's absolutely no amperage on that line, 
this, this line is energized, but it's not drawing any load. So if you were to measure the amperage in that line, it's gonna be zero. Now we measure, measure it on the next customer over, whom's using up 1000 amp. Again, if an individual is standing on the ground, he has the same body resistance of 50,000 ohms between his foot and his shoe and touching a finger up on the line. At this point, there's still gonna be zero amps traveling through this portion. Let's, let's say he contacts the line right here. So we plug in our formula. We've got our 12,000 volts, 50,000 ohms resistance. There's gonna be 0.24 of an amp that's gonna be passing through his body. So at this point, you check amperage on the line, you're still gonna have zero amps on this portion here. And between the source and the path that's going to the person that's getting electrocuted, you will have 0.24 amps in that line. So on the line with 1,000 amps, it's gonna be the exact same situation. That, that person's gonna receive 0.24 amps pass through their body, which would more than likely be lethal. Now, again, these, these numbers are, they're, they're not overly accurate. You're gonna have uh, voltage differences that passes through the body. The, the resistance is gonna be ever changing slightly. You could, you could have your body as, as low as 1,000 ohms resistance if you're standing in a puddle of water and real hot day and you're sweating. Or maybe you've got really good rubber boots on, rubber gloves, at which point you could almost have infinite resistance as, as long as the voltage can't overcome the, the insulating properties of your boots and rubber gloves, for example. So hopefully that clarifies what my intentions were in saying that I don't like that saying a little bit. Um, it's, it's absolutely, in a literal sense, the amperage that does, you know, destroy and burn, fry your tissue. Um, it's the, the, the two main points I wanted to cover was that when, when, you, when you do an amp check on the line, that's, that's not going to have any outcome of the person getting electric shock. So I don't want people to think because a line has zero amperage that it's any safer than a line with a thousand amps. And, and the other point was that when this voltage is lower, there's a much less chance of there being a fatal uh, electrocution. So the, the voltage does play a huge part, but ultimately it's, it's the amperage passing through you that does the damage, but the, the voltage, like I said, it does play a huge part. And this, I know I'm repeating myself now, but I wanna make, make it clear that this is the part right here that really makes me not like that saying. It's not the amps that kills the volts, is, is there can be zero amps in a line. And this situation here is gonna be, have an identical outcome in, in the event of an accidental contact.